Alright, we're recording. Welcome back to the Secret Society of Strangers podcast. I'm Lee, your host. I'm here with Jamie and Josh, as always. What Hi, up, guys? Hey, hey. Hello. So I'm going to jump right into things this time. We'll get to all the fancy stuff later. Um, the topic today is going to be NDEs, which are near-death experiences, if you're unfamiliar. Um, they are way more common than I thought originally. Um, so the definition of a near death ex- the definition of a near death experience is a profound personal experience associated with death or impending death, which researchers describe as having similar ca- characteristics. When positive, such experiences may encompass a variety of sensations, including detachment from body, feelings of levitation, total serenity, security, warmth, joy, and a few other things I won't get into right now. When they're negative, such experiences may include anguish, despair, a feeling of void, devastation, and vast emptiness. Um, Yeah, Uh, and those things come up a lot in a lot of them. So we'll get into also why I chose to have NDEs as a topic and a main focus because I'm kind of obsessed right now. (laughs) It's kind of your Um, thing right now. (laughs) Yeah, it's been for about a year, a little bit over a year. I've been kind of just hyper-focused. Um, I guess then I will introduce our resident NDE -er, uh, Jamie. Um, So she had an experience that she's going to tell us about. I have been really excited to hear it in full. Um, And I have a buttload of questions. So many questions. (laughs) Um, Do you guys have anything else you guys want to add? Do you have anything you want to say before we hear Jamie's story? No, I'm ready to dive right into this. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, Jamie, floor is yours. Um, And I'm happy to take your questions as they come up. So feel free at any point to stop me and get clarification, ask questions, whatever. So um, I've shared my story um, with several close friends. And then there's also a support group, a near-death experience support group that I've gone to twice and I've shared it with the group. So I'm feeling a little more comfortable and confident about sharing it with more than just uh, my immediate closest group of uh, confidants. So I'm ready. (laughs) Um, So, you know, the, the way the three of us connected was through Reddit and I've been on Reddit for years and years and years. And I love the, um, the camaraderie and the sense of humor and pretty much I have the sense of humor of a 13 year old boy. So I can, I can, I can live in a space where um, it doesn't matter what my gender or anything. So I can just like hang out with the boys. So I love Reddit. And I don't know if the listeners or if you two heard of Cicada 3301. Do you know what that is? I've heard you talk about it a couple of times. Okay. So um, Cicada 3301 was, um, I don't even know how real it is, but it was real enough. It, it was like a like a scavenger hunt almost. And by the time I had heard about it, it was years old. So all of the initial puzzles had been solved. Like the, the puzzles where you have to, you have to listen to a song and go to the metadata and do all this crazy stuff that I, I did not have the depth of knowledge that would have ta- it would have taken to have done that. Um, so, but there was a puzzle that had been recently released within the last few years that no one had been able to decipher. And it was a language that still no one has deciphered. Really? And it's, I don't know, 20, 30 pages long. I, I love words. I, I love, I love languages. And so it was kind of my cup of tea. And I'm only saying this because I spent a lot of time not only just really trying to decipher the language, but also I spent a lot of time delving into esoteric texts that I had never heard of before to try to understand what it was that I was trying to decipher. 
And so never before had I ever in my life been um, maybe bold enough to start reading these different texts and getting to know maybe a little more about the universe, perhaps. At the same time, I was a complete skeptic of all this stuff. So to me, it was like reading, um, you know, some people read the Bible. I think it's the absolute truth. I read the Bible and took it as like, it's all symbolic. It's all allegory. You know, I teach English. So there are allusions in literature. It's important that I know, especially the Old Testament. Uh, but I didn't take it as like absolute truth or anything. And quite honestly, I, I've been to church, but I uh, there wasn't really any part of me that was particularly interested in whether or not God was real. I mean, I have two children, so like the that like the miracle of birth certainly felt miraculous. Perhaps maybe you know like the closest to God I've ever felt, but still at the same time, it was like I was a skeptic of everything didn't believe anything really. Um, like if you had really pushed me, that's what I would have said. But I was also very private about all of that. I didn't really ever talk about it. So um, I guess that maybe I was being initiated into something that was a little different. Um, and maybe my subconscious was being maybe like a little bit of like an opening, of like a flower of like being able to take in a little more than what I realized I was taking in. And so um, also at the same time, I would, had gone through a divorce and uh, my children were, were it, was, it was a really just sad time for me because I wasn't as close to my children as I had always been. And I had fallen into a relationship that wasn't a very healthy relationship. <laughs> and I kind of found myself back in a place where, I had sort of hung my hat on a man and I wasn't very independent. And at the same time, I am a strong independent woman, but also I wasn't, I don't, I don't know. There's that conundrum, you know, the paradox, the, mm -hmm. I don't know. So there was a lot about myself I didn't really know yet. And um, I just was very rooted in this 3D reality that we walk around in all the time. And I, I didn't want to think about death, did not want to consider it. Um, I had a, my best friend died when I was 33. And I think she was 32 at the time that she passed. And uh, I missed her every single day. And for me, death was like the end. And my grandmother had passed away, my great aunt had passed away. So uh, my fa father-in-law had passed away. So these very significant people whom I loved had died. And, you know, I had never been like visited by a spirit or anything like that. I maybe had dreamed about my best friend like once or twice and a whole bunch of years, but I never had any kind of like revelation of, oh, all of this is real and it's going to be okay. You know, none of that. So what I'm saying is like going into this, I, I was not the kind of person who thought that any of this was real. And um, the person I was dating, his brother had had um, like a UFO sighting. And I, <laughs> I remember the October before my near death experience, he was telling the story and I was like, Oh my gosh, this guy is absolutely crazy. <laughs> so like, so like the I woo was, was so just not on your scope. <laughs> No, I was super judgmental. So I was that guy. <laughs> and I now I feel kind of badly because now I'm like, oh, I could have been nicer. So I just I understand. <laughs> if anybody's listening and you're like, this is crazy. I totally get it. It's just like once you have that experience, it's like you can't undo the experience. So whether the experience is a near death experience or <laughs> a ghost or UFO or whatever, it's like you're changed, you know? Mm -hmm. and you can't it's almost like a door opens up and then like yes. you see like the world of like how it is yes. i guess exactly and i didn't realize there was more than what we could sense with our five senses i mean like you know intuition sure a woman's intuition a mother's intuition you know i, I always i could be in a dead sleep and i knew my child was crying in the middle of the night yeah like, it's like you, you had know, that spidey sense yeah but i didn't i still didn't 
really give that any more credence than just like, oh, I was just my hearing was a little better now than right, I'm right. Something. It's not like you were thinking that it was like a no a different kind of like feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, none of it. <laughs> okay. And also, like, I just was sort of a goody goody. I'll be honest with you, I didn't really do that much stuff, and so I just didn't know. And um, so I had um, got into this relationship, and I knew that I needed to leave. Like, I knew it was not healthy. At the same time, I was really embarrassed and ashamed that I was in the middle of it, and I didn't know how to get out of it. And so, um, like, there was, you know, there's always with a relationship, there's a breaking point, and the breaking point had happened, and uh, I didn't you know, COVID-19 was going on. So I didn't, I, I had kind of um, let a lot of other friendships go or whatever. So I didn't really have anybody to talk to uh, is how I felt. And so I, um, there's an app called Rando Knots, R-A-N-D-O-N-A-U-T-S. And it can take you to like cool, like hiking spots that are not really actually hiking spots. It's just, here's a weird spot go walk there. And so I had, I had downloaded it and not I, dangerous at all. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> not dangerous at all. No, no, not you going to no. be 411. <laughs> a little naive, but also I'll be honest with you. I felt very much like with the cicada 3301, I was led in this. I was led down certain like rabbit holes or paths. I felt like I was, supposed to go on this hike i knew even though there wasn't anything saying like this is what you're supposed to do i knew i was supposed to go on this hike and so i was headed to the grocery store and i was like hang on a second i'm going to do this hike first before i go to the grocery store and i was by myself so i like pull over and it wasn't that far from where we were living or where i was living at the time and um, i was like out in the middle of nowhere in western north carolina um and it was <laughs> it was private property, I'm sure. So I guess I was on their property. But I thought in my head, I was like, if anybody says anything to me, I'll just say I'll apologize and then turn around and go back to the car. Nobody said a word. <laughs> um, this is in Western North Carolina. There's a lot of land that's owned by people, but like they're dead and nobody nobody's around anymore. So mm -hmm. I just knew that I would be OK. And so I hiked to the top of this humongous mountain and it was so beautiful. And there was, it had snowed recently and I remember getting like really hot on the hike. And so like I had taken off my coat, the, you know, like gloves, scarf, like the extra sweater, the extra shirt or whatever. Like I was, I mean, I, I was stripped down to like a t-shirt and jeans mm -hmm. and it was also, it was also weird because I didn't even know where I was like <laughs> taking all this stuff off. I was just like, I'm going to get out of this, but I knew how to get to the top. And it was also getting late in the afternoon. And there was part of me that was like, huh, I probably need to hurry this up because it's going to be dark soon. Cause it was January 4th would have been when I took the hike of 2022. And, but I had the sense that like, actually, time is a construct <laughs> and it almost felt a little timeless i'll be honest mm -hmm. with you. i knew i had just enough time to get to the top do what i need to do and get back down and that it didn't matter how long it took me it, i would have plenty of sunlight it was just like this beautiful like feeling on the inside um very like comforting and loving in a way that i had not felt before and so I get to the top finally and uh, I just, I looked out and I, for the first time really ever like prayed in a way that wasn't just like me saying I'm going to pray because I'm supposed to pray or whatever. It was just like having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with whatever source, energy, universe, God, like whatever you want to <laughs> call it. I, I had like a real conversation and I cried a little, but mostly I was saying, like, I'm really embarrassed and I don't know how to get, up, get out of this and I need help. I just asked for help. Mm -hmm. And the help I thought I was asking for was, like, please bring me personal strength so that I have the strength to get out. 
because I've always like just relied on myself. I grew up um, just having to rely on myself. And so there was no part of me who thought like anything extra was going to ha <laughs> happen. I would never, now that I'm on the other side of it, I'm really grateful for it. I never, ever would have asked for this because it would have, it would have been too much mm. had I known what was going to happen. <laughs> It, I would not have wanted it to ha happen, be honest with you, in the way that it did. But I'm really glad that it did now. Because it it's been really hard. <sighs> Sorry. Take your time. Yeah. No. I'll make a comment. I think it's interesting that you had like a little bit of like a precognition to the whole thing. Yeah. Like you felt like you were drawn to that spot and then you like felt very connected or had that deep need to like converse with whatever and then the yeah. whole like time standing still thing for you that seemed like it was very much like tailored towards your journey up the mountain and and like it's only in retrospect that i can see that you know like mm -hmm. when it was happening yeah. you don't think about that mm -mm. no mm -mm. Uh, let me ask you this this is mm -hmm. it'll jump a little bit forward but um, we don't have to get into it, but you having that conversation um, with whoever it was, mm -hmm. um, is that you you giving up control and like you accepting that there's more here than? No, absolutely what? not. No, 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 no. It was more like, it was almost felt like talking to myself out loud in a way. Kind of like a, a re reaffirmation or like a like, personal mantra please thing. Help me, but I don't even know how to explain it. It's like, but not like surrender or anything like that. It's mm -hmm. like God and me. No, but there was no thought of like, like something outside of myself was going to help me. I, I really, that was not the expectation at all because I've never experienced anything like that before. Like, mm -hmm. I'm very self reliant and uh, it was more just like, let me uh let me just like push down the shame long enough to get out okay yeah so at least that's what i thought i was asking for apparently i was asking for more <laughs> 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 or actually i don't so well what so what happened was i went back and it was two more days and i still hadn't left and so all this strength that I was asking for, I'll be honest with you, if what happened had not happened, I would probably still be with this person. And that's, a, that's awful to say. So I guess God was like, well, we're going to have to come down and help her. <laughs> <laughs> give you that nudge. <laughs> yeah, they gave me a nudge. So, um, also, and this is weird. I don't think I've ever told anybody this part. Um, there was a word for like a week that kept going in my head and I would say it out loud. Cause I hadn't even, didn't even, you know, you'll think thoughts, whatever, you know, I mean, right. You guys have like internal the inner monologue. <laughs> yeah. No, no. No, man. Yeah. So, but there was a word that kept coming up in my thoughts that I didn't know. And I don't know how I knew the word, but it was Elohim, E-L-O-H-I-M. Who knows if I'm even saying it correctly, but every thought that I have this, like I have, like I close caption anything mm -hmm. that you're saying to me. And generally speaking, and so I see like, proper dialogue, I mean, proper uh, punctuation, capitalization, and the words are spelled correctly. And, um, but I don't, I don't close caption my own thoughts, but this word, I kept seeing it as if I had been reading it. And maybe in the Cicada 3301 stuff, I had seen this come across this word. I don't know, but Elohim, we can look it up later and get a better definition, but it's um, actually, can somebody look it up? So, Definition. So I've I've heard that word before, and yeah. it I think it is something to do like biblical, like it's a like a like a, God an for, angel. a form of angel, like you have seraphim and like different class. So, but I could be wrong, but yeah, we could look it up. But I think that's I just don't want to tell people the wrong thing. 
It's yeah. the grammatically plural noun for gods or deities. Yeah. Or various words in the biblical Hebrew Bible. Yeah, like when they used to call God Yahweh and stuff like that. Yeah. Interesting. So, um, <clears throat> so the night of January 6, 2022, I was lying in bed in high head. Uh, I had not, um, I hadn't left. And I, I was so disappointed in myself. And also I was a little worried about that night. And I'm laying there and all of a sudden it was my body just started vibrating. And I don't know how to explain this other than to just say it how it was. But it was like, it was like, like a shaking, like, like down. And like, or like up and then whoosh, like that. <laughs> and now I know it's called a Kundalini awakening. It's like your shocker is just like, it was like the shock. And I, also when I'm saying this stuff, it sounds, I feel like it sounds like crazy, but it is, this is exactly what happened. So, mm -hmm. and again, oh, wait, I was not interested in all of this stuff. I had never heard of the word Kundalini. This is only after doing a lot of research to figure out like what had happened. So Give me one second. Let me just so let me understand. So you felt it from your head to your toes, and then from your toes to your head, or did it like bounce back and forth? Was it a full body thing? It was like a, it was like an up from the earth, and I'm lying in the bed, so it was mm -hmm. it was like up, and like almost like a spiraling, like a, and then once everything had shaken into place mm -hmm. and had lined up. And it was like this divine energy just went right through me and like intertwined. It was like a, the double helix, like the DNA mm -hmm. strand. It was like <laughs> fully, I was fully alive. Wow. Okay. I never heard of this before. Didn't know what it was. It scared the shit out of me. Yeah, that would scare the fuck out of me if I just woke up and I'm just like vibrating. No, I was what? awake and he was beside me. I would think I was having a panic attack. I've had oh, panic yeah. attacks before. It was not a panic attack. There was. Oh, my thing it is. I would have, but that would have been my first thought if it was me. Mm. You're trying to like rationalize it. Yeah. I was like, what the hell's going on? It, it was mm. so different. I'm no, a panic attack starts like. Because I, I had a few uh earlier like 15 years ago so i knew what that felt like and this was com completely opposite of that panic attack because a panic attack makes you feel so lonely and sad inside like you're the only person mm -hmm. this was the complete opposite this was this was so connected <laughs> like it was scary i never that. felt it before but it mm -hmm. was it was, it was like if you are like a battery or something, you finally get plugged into your face. I was just about network. to say, it's like you get plugged into something <laughs> and you're like part of this bigger network that you didn't know existed. That's it. Yeah. And so. Much like the word Elohim that I've been hearing. But I didn't, that never frightened me because it still felt like an internal dialogue. Mm -hmm. There was an outer outside, but it, nobody could hear it. And also I'm completely rational and logical, but I very clearly heard a voice that said like, tick tock, this is your chance. Did you We're recognize the voice as like someone you... No. no, it was a voice, but also not a voice. It was like a voice, but also just a complete knowing. It was like your inner dialogue, dialogue that was not. It was, but it was like inner dialogue that was also an outer dialogue. So I've never had that before, where it was both simultaneously. It was like all you have to do is get up and get to the church across the street. We will protect you. Hmm. And it didn't make any sense. 
and also it had snowed recently. And there's no way I'm getting out of the bed. It was eight o'clock at night. I go to bed early. Right. <laughs> you know, like regular me would have been like, it'll be fine. I'll get up at seven and then I'll go. And this was this was like, no, you're going now. Like TikTok, this is this is it. This is your chance. We've mm-hmm. we've like torn apart the fabric of space and time. And it was like I knew that they had because when I took that hike the two, two days before, time is just a thing, right? Like it really didn't exist. And I realized that in this moment, whatever I was ha- whatever had happened to me didn't need to happen to me again. And I could just get up and I could go and I could step through to where they were telling me it was time to step through to. Um <clears throat> And when I say they, it was almost like a collective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, I jumped up and I stepped through and it was, uh, I did not put on any shoes. I did not grab my phone. I did not um, change out my pajama pants and t-shirt. I didn't do anything. I knew that I was completely protected. Now, did I think it was God protecting me? I didn't really know what to think, except to say that, like, I had never lived in the present moment as much as I did this night. Mm -hmm. Usually I'm always thinking ahead or thinking, like, things in the past. And I'm living in the moment. But also, I'm kind of a daydreamer, you know, like, the present moment is just for me, whatever. No, this was, I was on. This was like going into battle in a way Mm -hmm. without having to battle anybody. So I got up and it was almost as if, um, that there was like another powerful spirit that it intertwined alongside of my own. That's why I felt like it. That's why I felt so different and powerful. And I wasn't afraid, really. That's what shifted also. I immediately became, once I got up and stepped through, I was no longer afraid. And also, I felt very much like I was just going along for the ride. It was like somebody else was in control, but like you were just there. Mm -hmm. It was like somebody was like, had you by the wrist and was like dragging you along. Mm -hmm. It was as if uh, it was like me was like pushed back and this new me that had come through was like, baby girl, I got it. (laughs) You can take a back seat. Everything's going to be okay. We've got this. And I just, I darted, I I ran and um, I, you know, he's, obviously like doesn't understand what's going on either he's like freaking out he's like what's wrong with you what's wrong with you and i didn't say a word i just i just ran i ran down the stairs oh i forgot to tell y'all something too can i go back yeah okay so i forgot about the hike part i forgot to finish that part so after i talked to god and once i realized that like you know i told everything and like i had it was like a confession almost. I'm not Catholic or anything. It was like going to confession. I uh, was making my way back down and I had this overwhelming sense that there was a gift for me somewhere on this mountain. And I went around and kind of like looked around and stuff and it, when I was still on the top, but I didn't see anything. And I was like, man, eh, that's kind of weird. <laughs> this is already <laughs> weird. I, I think I'm done now. And so also I was like, I have no idea where, cause there's no path. So there was no path. I had to forge my own path up this mountain. I had no idea where I'd put my coat and all that stuff. And I was kind of mixed up. I didn't even know where my car was or anything, but I very easily went back down the mountain, found all my clothes, put them back on. And then I saw this string and it was very odd. It was like, um, I can't remember the color, but it stuck out enough where I was like, huh, that's weird. And it was wrapped around all of these different trees and stuff. And so I just kept following the string down the mountain a little ways. And it ended um, 
And can I go get it? I'll go get it. Go ahead. Right. Yeah. I'll be right back. Sorry. I really just find it interesting that there was a three right here leading up to. So. Yeah. Okay. It's all, it's it's like it was like just placed there for her to follow. It was. <clears throat> because it also led me back to my car eventually. Like it put me back it put on the right track. The right track to get back to my car. So that's so crazy. Mm -hmm. The whole thing is crazy. So <laughs> So at the end of the string, it was like, it just was like dangling between these two trees and y'all, it was like fresh dirt. And I was like, hmm, I think I know this is my gift under here. And I was like, <laughs> put it with my hands, <laughs> with my gloves. Mm -hmm. I actually wound up uh, getting rid of that, the coat and the gloves because there was so much like dirt from where I dug this up. And it was this rock. And it looks like a parallelogram and, and it has like finger grooves. And I don't know, Cherokee maybe? And this is Cherokee land. And my great great grandmother was Cherokee. And I mean, like my ancestors or something. I don't know. I really don't know. But I found this rock. And this is a very important rock. And what I'm going to say also, it's going to sound crazy, but like everything's energy. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like everything is every everything's just all in one in the same, just condensed down to different forms. So this rock was like like a really good friend. And I put this rock in my pocket and not like to bash his head in or anything like that, but it was just felt like it felt like love, <clears throat> which was weird. So um so I get down to the bottom of the mountain and there were, there was a family of deer, like five or six of deer. And they just stared at me and they were, so, they were enormous and this enormous buck. And they just stared at me with like, look, and usually a deer, they run away. This is mountains of North Carolina. These are not city deer by any means. These, these are country deer and country deer run away, you know? And they just yeah, they're, they're not used to seeing people. No, and <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. What? I said, if you do see people, they're getting shot at. Exactly. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> they know they need to run away. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I just I stared at them. I kind of stopped and stared at them for a while, and they just they like stared at me, and I don't know. So it just, it felt like love. And then I got back down and um, then I was like trying to go back up this little embankment to get to my car. And it, I came out like in the perfect spot, like way better than the, I didn't go, I didn't go down the same way I came up. The way mm -hmm. I came up was on a completely different side. And the way I went down was so different because I found this. But guess what? It spit me out. I saw the deer. There was a road I could walk instead of going through all this brush and stuff. And and then there was my car. I had to go up this embankment and my car was right there. Hmm. And uh, obviously I'd never been to this place before in my life. So and I also going up the embankment, I saw this little tin can and I just knew also I was supposed to take the tin can. So that night um that during the kundalini awakening the bed was uh like nearly right over where my purse was on the first floor i didn't take a wallet with me or anything but this was on the first floor it's kind of nearly underneath the bed and I, mean, I just i don't know i feel the sense of gratitude to this rock because i feel like there was energy in this rock that was like i don't know like given to me somehow i don't know and this sounds crazy but and i haven't told a lot of people that part as well because i don't know thank you for telling trying us. to process this has been a lot what thank you for telling us you're welcome yeah. and everybody else is listening but yeah. <laughs> hopefully everybody listening you take my story and you know with like love and gratitude because i'm just taking my heart out and giving it to you all right now it's appreciated yeah. Okay. So, so anyway, 
So uh, fast forward, I am running down the driveway and we're in like three acres and it was a very long driveway. It's probably a mile run up to the church. The church was across the street up this giant hill. I had never been there. And I remember getting really tired. He was, he was behind me. He was, I'm, I'm pretty short. He's pretty tall. Like there's like a foot difference and his legs are really long. Am I really short? And <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know why he couldn't catch me, but he didn't, he couldn't catch me. And I, uh, there was a truck that was going down the road on the little two lane highway between where we lived and where the church was. And uh, part of me was going to, was thinking about like flagging down the truck to say, help me. Um, but I got pulled back and very clearly was, no, you let that, you don't push your trust in that man. You need to let him go on. Mm -hmm. so I pulled back. Still, he wasn't able to catch me. This truck had to go on. And, and then I like looked both ways and crossed yeah. the road. <laughs> and going up the mountain, <laughs> yeah, it was a very steep, like hill mountain thing. And um, I was getting really, really tired and I was afraid. And the, the, the voice was very clear that like, no, I was going to be fine. All I had to do was get to the stairs. That was it. That's all I had to do. And that I would be safe. And so I did. I got to the stairs. And um, I, uh, I have never felt stronger or more powerful or more connected to the universe or more connected to God in that, than in that moment. Um, so he made it to the church and I told him I thought he was not a good person and, and he did not disagree with what I was saying. And um, I told him, <laughs> I was like, you know, you need to leave. And he did. And there was such power in that as well, because it was like, it wasn't me saying the words, but I said exactly what I needed to say in order to make him leave. Mm -hmm. And, but before I did that, I, I invited him on the stairs because I have such like an open heart. Like I can be naive and a little trusting, maybe too trusting sometimes. And I was like, if you're not a bad person, I already knew he was, but I was like, but if you're not, like you have one chance, come up on these stairs with me. All you have to do is take one step onto these church steps. Hmm. And he refused. He would not. It was as if there was like a shield between the two of us that he couldn't, he couldn't cross. And I don't know if that was like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it was the energy of my words that I was using, the energy of just the emotion that I had. I, I don't know what it was, but um, he left and uh, I'd never felt more powerful, more alive, really more like, <laughs> like, holy shit, this shit's real. Like God is real. And I remember um, also I started crying and I remember saying, oh, like, I just want to go home, which didn't make sense because I wasn't talking about his home. I wasn't talking about anywhere that's here on earth. And I've never, ever felt that way. And, and then the realization of like, no, this, I'm here for a while. And we got to get me protected. And so I, the lights are on inside this church. And it was like a one, one room church. You know what I'm saying? Like a little, like a, Little one small country church. church. Thank you. Small country church. They might have like 15 members kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had them where I grew up in North Carolina. Yeah. They're, it's, yeah. it's crazy. They're tiny. You know, everybody's mm -hmm. dying off. And yeah. So, yeah. And so the, but the lights are on. I could see the lights, the, the transom window, like the stained glass up above the big, it was a big double door. Very, mm -hmm. very tall. I'm very, very short. And, uh, 
I was banging on the, the church door, like, help me, help me, help me. Please let me in. Please let me in. Because I, I really thought was somebody was there and could let me in and help me and help me figure out, like, what to do next. Mm-hmm. And uh, then the the voice very clearly was like, we have a key for you. Just look up. And y'all, I look up and above the transom window, like on the little ledge, <laughs> I could see it was like a little key fob. Um, I remember like, you know, if you ever go to the lake or where there's water, you know, those little floaty key fobs, like you go fishing yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. I could see it. It was like a little like, like thick little th- key fob. And, and then my next thought was, I am never going to be able to reach that. <laughs> Just up there jumping. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, it's it's a lot. It's just <laughs> one jump. That was it. I just I went, bam, grabbed it and jumped back down. Y'all, I can't even reach the top stuff yeah. at the grocery store. Like <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask people to help me. If it's too far back, you know. No, if it's right up front, I can get it. But if it's too far back, I have to ask for help or I have to crawl up, you know, like oh man, up. I've done the crawl up a couple of times. Yeah, <laughs> you right? look both ways, so, you're like, all right, so nobody's looking at me. <laughs> I just wait until I see a tall man, and then I'm like, <laughs> and that's usually me. I'm like, sure, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> see, you sure, probably, tiny person, I got you. Now you'd be like, Oh yeah, I've helped you get something off the top shelf. I'm like I always say that. Yeah. I'm going to ask short people to get the stuff on the bottom for me. And I would say. I, I just can't get on my knees right now. Can you just get that for me? Thanks. I, and I would think in my head. It's a good take and give relationship. Just favors. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's why I haven't done it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask a woman. No. <laughs> I mean, you can. Oh. But it should probably be your wife. So. <laughs> it would definitely so. be. <laughs> Don't ask a random moment. And so, so I grabbed it and I let myself into the church. I didn't even shut the door behind me. That's how protected I felt. I didn't take the key out of the door either because there was no way I was going to get back up there. So I was like, I'll just leave it. I don't know. I wasn't even, that was the other thing. I was living in so much the present moment that there was no part of me who was worried about like, I need to take the key out and return it and whatever. No, this is, I'm like, this is just survival at this point. Mm-hmm. And so I go to the bathroom, I get a mint, I get some water. It's a little teeny tiny church. And there was a bell, like, like Notre Dame, you know, and like, hunchback, mm-hmm. like and I've never gotten to ring the bell before. And I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going to ring it. It's freedom. And oh, man, the child in me would just shameless. <laughs> <a lot. laughs> so, but maybe that, Maybe that's what alerted everyone. So <laughs> but anyway, so the, the date now is January 6, 2022. It's the day of epiphany. And I don't really know all that that means, but I didn't even really fully I get until later that the like, oh, that's what that was. But when I opened the door to the little, you know, what do you call it? Like the, the big, where you have big church. That's what we would call it. Big church. Big church where the pews and everything are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you call that. And yeah. so I let myself in and I see at the end, there's a beautiful Christmas tree, but it's not lit up. And the Advent candles, um, they have, all the Advent candles are there. And so I'm like lighting the Advent candles. I plug in the, the tree and I go and I play the piano. I play some Christmas songs. I play piano. And, um, I mean, I just felt at home fucking fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. I've never thought that. Of, I've never thought about that before, but I think you're right, Josh. It felt like home. Mm-hmm. And I've never you felt, felt like that very before. peaceful. It felt so peaceful. Also, I'll be honest with you walking down the little aisle. This might be a little unhinged, but there was the, um, the, you know, the, the offering plate and they mm-hmm. ask the money all the time. And I kick, I did kick that over. Cause I was like, that should not be here. Yeah. I have my own thoughts about hustler preachers and such. Yeah, no, it was, I don't know. So when, when I was, before I went in and I, I don't know if you've ever heard of something called Christ consciousness, but it's like when you are fully aligned with like, source Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. that you just you you are one and the same with God, basically. And I've never felt that way before. And I just knew that like whatever religion is now, it's not the intention of the message that mm-hmm. Jesus had given. Not Jesus the man, but like Christ, the power. The Christ consciousness that went through him that channeled the message from the source. And again, I'm saying this and y'all I just, I didn't know any of these things until that night, but I walk in and I'm like, fuck that also. So I kick it over. Cause I was, I was really fucking pissed that that was at church, that that was inside church. Mm-hmm. And I was also really fucking pissed that hanging up at the end was this horrific wooden cross with fucking Jesus on the cross with like the nails to his hands and his feet with this thorn crown on his head that was so gross and that children had to stare at and adults had to stare at too like like, what the fuck that's what you're going to remember about jesus that's what we're teaching but it's only because that's fear they're putting the fear into people that if mm-hmm. you don't do what we tell you to do, we're going to crucify you in the same way. And that's what church is today. And I was mm-hmm. really fucking pissed about that as well. So you know what? I? T- <laughs> so I did go over. So I kicked over the offering plate. And then I took the crown off of his head and put it around my neck to make it a necklace. That sounds crazy, too. But I wanted to transmute the, the energy of what church has turned into down here Mm -hmm. oh sorry it's kind of like you're accusing that as like a catalyst to connect to something no it was not i don't maybe i it just pissed me off i was like i'm not i'm not going to be in here and commune with god with that hanging on the wall this is disgusting and we need to change this stuff. This is not good. This is not healthy for people to look at. It makes people sad. And Jesus wasn't, or Christ was not about sadness. He was about happiness and love. That's hate. That's celebrating the hate that happened to him. That was hate that put him on that cross. That is hate that put that on his head. <sighs> Have I ever been upset about that before? No. No. I was really upset that night. That's interesting. Because, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so I go and play Christmas songs and everything. And um, so, <clears throat> so uh, I hear some noise. <laughs> and my thought was, well, the guy that I was dating is, he's gotten in and so I'm not really a fighter I'm more of a flighter and actually if you've ever seen um that show Arrested Development where they try they try to teach Buster how to fight and Buster (laughs) just drops (laughs) that I don't fly or fight I just drop (laughs) and cry and so I was like I got two candles out I was like this will scare him away. Like, get away from me. And um, it was a police officer that came in. And uh, he, you know what he did? He just blew out the two candles. I was like, well, that wasn't very <laughs> Well, this did nothing. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't think this through. Yeah, don't follow. Yeah, you don't want to follow me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> or actually made me do. And so I was like, huh, that didn't work out. Because everything had worked out so well so far. <laughs> I was like, huh, I didn't think that went through. Just looking at the candles. Um, well, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also, I'm really, really blind. Like, like thick, since second grade, Coke bottle glasses. So I wear contact lenses. I was so frightened by mm-hmm. what was happening that I turn away from him and I immediately take out both my contact lenses. Because I did not want to see him or see what was happening. So everything that happens from here on out, I'm blind as a bat. I can't really see anything. And um, 
So, you know, he's like, what are you doing in here? And then behind him, six more police officers come in. And at this point, I am absolutely just, I'm terrified. But also, uh, would be too, if six yeah. police officers just ran into the, the church. Seven total. Yeah. Seven, yeah. seven total. And th that also seems like a lot of like unnecessary police officers, like one or two for sure, but seven to just yeah, show well, up for a church disturbance. <laughs> right. I, you know, the only thing I can say is like, thank goodness that they did mm -hmm. so that I could have the experience that I had. Because I wouldn't want to be anywhere but on the other side of what happened. Um, and I consider myself so lucky and so grateful for everything. And also, fuck them. But uh, <laughs> that's just the human mortal me saying <laughs> the spiritual side is like, I'm so grateful for it. <laughs> but I am. I'm glad to have had all the experiences that I had. And so... Um, so he's like, you know, you can't be in here. And um, and I was explaining, like, I'm seeking refuge in this place. I thought, I sh seriously should you not. Know, I thought those were the magical words that, like, you could, I swear to God, I thought people could take refuge in a church. And all you had to say was, I'm taking refuge. And I can't hear you, Lee. You may be on the Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. makes sense. Like, you you yeah. see people running into churches mm -hmm. like, hey, I'm seeking amnesty, safety. And yes, that's it. exactly. That's, you're yes. safe. It's, like, it's home base. You stood in the home. <laughs> exactly. And right. truthfully, I think that, like, you know, if there's a woman who's crying and saying she's seeking refuge, like, you should listen to her, you know? Yeah. And I hope that if any other woman um, <clears throat> needs help, and that she goes to church, that she gets the help that she needs now. So, um, so they weren't listening. They were very upset with me. And I went over, I, I was like, whatever. And so <laughs> I wasn't listening to them. And I think these were good old boys. I had never really had a woman not listen to them. And, um, the old me, the me who was taking a back seat, absolutely would have done exactly what they told me to do. This new, beautiful spirit that was animating alongside my own was like, no. So I went back over and played the piano. <laughs> Let me play you this jaunty tune real quick. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe I, it'll I calm your boys like, down. Y'all can do whatever you want to do, but I'm gonna go play the piano. <laughs> Y'all do what you want. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything bad here. And I was saying like, and they're like, you broke in. I'm like, I didn't break in. There was a key. There was a key. <laughs> I found the key. Yeah. I put it. It's still in the door. You could take it back. I didn't steal it. <laughs> yeah. And again, that didn't help either. And so, um, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, it's, you know, whatever, it escalates. And I remember saying to them, like, um, like, put away your guns. I mean, they hadn't unholstered their guns, but I very much also knew that, like, it was like I could read their minds and I knew what their intentions were, and they didn't have good intentions. They were very mad at me. And it was escalating very quickly, and I didn't know how to de-escalate it. And I was standing in the center of them. And uh, I was begging them to please, like, I'm not, I'm not a danger. I, you know, you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have guns in church. This is not a place where you should have your guns. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, I guess they were afraid of me. I don't know. But they were like, no, we can't do that. And. <sighs> And I just kept getting more and more terrified. And I remember standing there in the center of them thinking like, like, uh, like this, they're about to shoot me. And then they tackled me. And, um, well, I kind of run from them a little bit. And then that 
that's when they tackled me to the ground. I didn't get far. And I was like vibrating at such a high rate of speed. They were having trouble like keeping the handcuffs on me for some reason. And I'm like on the ground. So my art, you know, like this. And I've I'm not, I've never been arrested in my whole entire <laughs> life. That is not anything I thought I would ever experience. It is not and, fun. <laughs> no, it wasn't. And so um they were getting more and more upset with me because I couldn't, for whatever reason, keep the handcuffs on me. And they were shouting to one another. He's like, I can't keep them on her. I can't keep them on her. And, and finally, I just had this overwhelming sense of like, it's okay. They can arrest you now. Just calm down. It's all going to be okay. That's so how I did. I just relaxed. I had this overwhelming, it's all going to be okay. And I just, all right. This is the next step of whatever's happening tonight. It's okay. I'll get through it. Because I, I don't know. So um, so they did. They arrested me. And I remember screaming and crying because I, you know, the mortal, me, when I was taking a back seat, I knew that I was safe inside the church. And I knew that I was not safe outside the church. I knew there was like, or at least I thought I wasn't safe outside the church because he was so close and they had been telling me like, man, that's your husband, ma'am, you have wife, uh, you have children with that man. And I kept trying to tell them like, he's not my husband. I do not have children with him. So I, at this point, there's no part of me who's willing to walk. So it was like, I just went limp. Well, all they do is they just pick you up and take you out anyway. So mm -hmm. I'm struggling and I'm like fighting because I don't want to leave the church. And I think I was saying, please don't make me leave the church. Please don't make me leave the church. And um, they didn't listen to me. <laughs> and so they took me outside and um, I could see that they that there was an ambulance that was called and the lights were going and I thought that's what they were going to do. I thought they were going to put me in the back of the ambulance, but they didn't. Um, they were so mad at me that um, maybe this was a tactic to make me be quiet. Before they put me in the ambulance. I really don't know. I never was. I, they never did put me in an ambulance. Uh, what they did was they had a like this giant like king cab truck. And when I say king cab truck, I don't really know if it's an actual king cab truck. I just know it was like giant truck. This big truck. Mm -hmm. But also I couldn't see very well. And so I didn't I didn't know exactly what they were doing. But I knew that like here's the ambulance on this side because I could see, you know, like lights going. Mm -hmm. And they didn't take me to that. They actually maybe it was like that. Maybe the ambulance was on this side and their king cab truck. It was like a black, like a dark truck. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see any kind of like, I couldn't make out any kind of sticker on the side that said it was a police truck or anything like that. So I just thought they were putting me in the back of like, like some random wanna, truck, like a private truck, you know, to like take mm -hmm. me off and like hurt me. Mm -hmm. And so um, I like open the door. And they like throw me in. And when they threw me in, uh, my head went into the floorboard and my legs are up in the air and my hands are like this. And so I'm upside down, my head in the floorboard. So my head is like turned like this, like on my neck, like, like this. Kind of like folded on yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's it was, it's like doing a handstand without hands. Right. So you're like yeah. all like cranked up and you can't like breathe. They put me, yeah. They put me like on top of my head, but obviously it just immediately goes like that. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, I was quiet because I couldn't, I couldn't breathe. That's what happened. Um, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't make a noise. I could make a sound. And then they like slam the door. And I remember being back there. And again, I had, you know, like, uh, I've, I'm such a hard-headed optimist that I really thought 
that everything was going to be okay. And then I realized, I can't breathe. And then I realized, like, well, no, that one of them's going to open the door. And then it was like this sense of, like, they're not opening the door, but it's going to be okay. And I had this overwhelming sense again of, like, I, like, I wasn't alone and that everything was going to be okay. And all I could think about were my children and how this was not going to make any sense at all to them about why mom died in the back of the king cap truck, police officer's truck. Because I had never been in trouble before. And I just was so sad that, like, they would have to go through, like, you know, not only my dying, my death, and not having a mom, but not, more than likely, not actually knowing what really happened, you know. And so I would have just been made to be like, you know, probably made it to be crazy. And so I asked God in that moment, and this is when I really knew God existed because there was no part of me that I didn't question anything. I just said, God, please let my children know how much I love them. And I didn't have like a life review in, in that, like in any other way. It was just, please, please protect my children and let them know like every moment of every day in their, the rest of their lives, let them know I love them beyond measure. And I had this overwhelming sense that like that would be taken care of. And so I also knew that it was <laughs> that it's gonna be way more beautiful on the other side. And then all I had to do was let go. And so I did. I um I had been like, you know, like I couldn't breathe in, but I had been holding on to the breath that I had had. So I'm a good strong swimmer. I can hold my breath a pretty long time. And uh, I knew once I breathed out, that there was no breathing in again. Again, it's like being underwater. Like once you breathe out, you best get to the top pretty fast or you're going to drown because the next thing you do, you're you know, going to take in water. So, but I wasn't going to be able to take in anything. And so um, uh, that's when I transitioned over. And um, so in that moment, Mm -hmm. Was that a moment you felt like you surrendered, like you had to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And felt at peace and just let go? Yep. And it was it was instantaneous. The mm -hmm. um, I was no longer here, but I was there. And when I say there, I was it was it was everything and nothing all at the same time. And what I realized is um, we are swimming in love all the time. It's all around us all the time. And I woke up in love. I don't even want to say wake up because it's not like I went to sleep, even though my eyes, I am sure they closed. Um, it was, was there any kind of sensation like physically? Mm, uh, it was like... Have you ever been on a long trip in a car, especially when you were a child and you fall asleep and you don't remember falling asleep and you really mm -hmm. don't even remember waking up, but you, you wake up and like, but it's not that you realize you're awake. It's that you can smell, like if you go to the beach you get in, maybe the windows are down and you wake up in the, or you notice like the salt water smell and the sea and, you can hear the ocean and everything and you're so happy and excited and you're like, Oh my God, this, this exists all the time. Even though I don't live here at the beach, this is this all the time. That's what happened. And did you, was there any point where you saw your body separate from what you were at that point? Um, no, I did not. I was, I was no, because I was transitioned to what I would consider like the angelic realm. As I say, you so, like peaked. Behind, you were behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't. Point. Yeah, 
it was more like like just we exist with such blinders on down here and that was just taken off mm -hmm. and i uh it was a welcoming home of my like in this y'all it's gonna say Like being back when I when I tell you earlier that I cried that I just wanted to go home, I was back home, mm -hmm. and I in that moment I realized that like everything here is just make believe for a little bit. It's just not real. I mean, it is real. It feels really, really real, but the real real is somewhere else, and it's kind of like. Um, I used to play uh, Super Mario Brothers a lot when I was a kid. And man, I could get into it. And there was this one time I played this really annoying neighbor. And she was like, I challenge you to a game because I was really good. And I was like, fine. And she went first and she died on like World 1 1. And I played the princess on my first man. Like, legit. That's how good I was. And, but what, okay. So, but I was really good. What I'm saying is, I only got really good because I played a lot, <laughs> and, a whole lot. And, you know, when your man dies, like you can really get into these games and stuff. And it's like you become like, I'm all into it. I got to play. And, and then when your man dies, it's like it, you snap out of that reverie. I had snapped mm -hmm. out of the reverie that happens when you're alive down here. And the next part I'm going to tell you also sounds kind of wild and crazy, but um, when I say there was an intertwining earlier and the reason I thought earlier, like, how far back am I going to tell this story? I went far back enough so that it would make sense when I tell you that that there was an intertwining of souls, of spirit. And that's the only reason I was able to be as strong and powerful as I was is because it wasn't just myself. It was like I had a super battery inside of me. Um, but when it was very important, um, the near-death experience was very important because that had – I. It, that's unsustainable. You cannot have two spirits intertwining all the time, at least for me. The, the power differentiation, differential, <laughs> too great. Mm -hmm. That um, it was like, uh, it was like the, let's see it now, the, the girl that I had played who thought she was so good and she died on like 1-1 one, one, and then I beat the game in one man. Mm -hmm. You know, those two, they, they're, they're not, we couldn't have been real teammates because she would have gotten bored after a while. And after a while, she, her own spirit would have been sad to play, you know. And so um, this the, the spirit that I would say animated me before was not as strong as the spirit that animates me now. So the two needed to separate. And so I would say that the, um, that the, uh, the player who played me before, because <laughs> I do see this as a, a, a very much sort of like a virtual reality game. Um, she had kind of completed that part of her life, and I appreciate so much what she she did. And she, I did see her. I didn't see her body because I really, it took me a long time to actually feel connected to this body. So, um, but what I did, I do have the sense of a reunion for me, going back to my own family, wherever I was, that she, I saw her go off and she's okay. Mm -hmm. And um, so there was uh, some like decompression sort of with my galactic soul family because, you know, I'm kind of left now with like, are angels just aliens from different planet, like a different star system? And that's kind of where I am now that like my human self, you know, sees it as, as angels and angels. Um, but I don't know. That's kind of weird and crazy too, to think that way maybe. But um, it was like a, a discussion about like, like this next part you're going to have to do on your own. And she had a lot of life experience. She knew how to handle this world. 
you have not had the same kind of experience because basically most people, most souls are born into brand new babies, you know, and -hmm. you get a lot of chances to fuck shit up. Right. Especially, I mean, here, well, you know, you, we live with our parents for so long that you have that fail stop, you know, and, but like going back in, like if if that's what's going to happen here, you're going into a body where you're kind of homeless. You had just been arrested. Um, you, you did, he's got all your shit. Your kids are really pissed at you and you love them with your whole heart. And you got to take care of them because you promised that to that other lady. And that was her dying wish. So you have like, that is like utmost importance. And also there, there's a lot of shit that needs to be fixed on earth. And so, like, are you sure you want to do this? And I was like, yeah, I got this. This is so easy. So easy. And so the message right before I came back into the body was being human is really hard. And then the next thing I know after hearing that message um, was, uh, well, not message. uh, The next thing I heard was, shit, is she breathing? Uh, and a police officer had opened the door, um, and that's what brought me back. They immediately, like, freaked out. Yeah, they and fucked up. Yeah, they, they fucking killed you. <laughs> but before you get into coming back, before you get into okay. coming back. Okay. Um, so while we'll just go on over there. All right. So while you were over there, do you have any sense of feeling like you were just in a small area of something much bigger Mm -mm. no no it was like a different level it's like if you go to the empire state building it's like asking what's the difference between floor one and floor two well maybe Mm. if you look outside but if you're just in it you don't really it's just a different experience but what if what's the difference between floor one and the top of the empire state building it's vast right it's very different but you're also it's not the first floor but you're in the same building does that make any mm. sense yeah no. yeah so it's like one in the same but not and also you know from the empire state building, so far and there's no end to it right because it just mm. goes around in a circle earth does right so there's no end to it it's everything and nothing and then so when you had a conversation or you were talking to was there a being was it mm-hmm. someone you recognize part of your soul mm-hmm. family was it mm-hmm. can you explain that a little bit mm-hmm. um i would say that it was god along with the angels and um I would say God, I mean, there's no like, like here in this 3D world, there's, you know, we have duality. So there's male and female, black and white, hot and cold, opposites, right? And there's not really that where I was. It was just maybe like more of a hierarchy. So you've got like, like God source is the the generator of all that is and sorry now i'm getting sweaty when my feet start sweating you know the, the shit's getting real man real, <laughs> yeah, real. Y'all, i wish you could feel my okay no i'm good on that <laughs> someone out there will be very happy to do that somebody will be hyped that you put your foot <laughs> no. up into the camera and they're like fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> Giving up free content. No, bro. <laughs> so you can subscribe to my OnlyFans. That's a joke. I'm just kidding. Or am I? No, I really just bum, bum, bum. Hey, get that bum, money, man. Bum. Hey, man, go after that bag. <laughs> Hustle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, yeah. And so, um, so like the beings themselves were angelic. They were like my soul family. So it's like almost like a but I, I see it as almost like a galactic kind of committee. That makes sense. Like, 
like guardian angel level kind of stuff. But were that, these like yours, like your specific, like ones you recognize their energy? Or would they be the same ones that greet everybody? Do you think? I don't, I don't oh, know. no, no, no. This is me like going back home. Like I, I do not, I, I have personally, me who, the soul that animates this body has never animated a body before. Like it took me a while and we'll talk about this in a little bit when we get to the after part, but I would literally forget that people could see me like. So, oh, so. I mean, somebody would say something to me and I would, it would, it was shocking. You're like, Oh like, shit, you're talking to me. <laughs> like, but I guess the question would be like, was there opportunity for you to be in a body before this? Like, did you just? I never wanted not it to be. be? Okay. Yeah, the, I, this. Yeah, no. You were just content to like being behind the curtain. No, guys, there are all sorts of beings around us all the time down here. We just mm -hmm. don't see them with our five senses, you know. So. You know, people come here, souls come here to learn lessons so that you can graduate to, like, you can go up the, you can graduate to higher levels of the Empire State Building. But mm -hmm. my, my, I would say my graduation long ago didn't happen on this planet. That's what I would say mm -hmm. to you. Um, and so when I was so there. You're saying not a human body. Right. Yes, exactly. But you've been in a physical form before. Mm. Somewhere, maybe. I would say that like the space suit that we wear here on Earth is unlike anywhere else. I would say this is like top level shit down here, guys. <laughs> we are amazing. That's this good is, to know, I guess. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a little, a little it's comforting. Just a space suit, you know, I forgot the space suit could be seen. And also, I think part of it is like where I was, was there is no, uh, there's still like, I'm me, yet at the same time, I can understand, see, this cat takes good care of me. She loves me very much. Um, she's an alien overlord, I'm pretty sure. Right? <laughs> okay. So, oh. Yeah. Yeah, she's here because she's like, mom, it's okay. So I would say that, um, what was I going to say? I was gonna say Skinny Pete. She's like, I love well, that his name is Skinny Pete. I know she's so cute. Too. Um, so yeah, like the yeah, we're just in spacesuits down here. But I would say, like on other planets, you know, you don't need this kind of spacesuit. It depends on what the atmosphere is, you know. But this, what well, our bodies are like, perfectly acclimated to Earth. Right. Okay. So, um, so yeah. Oh, I know what I was going to say. So there, it's amazing how you can be both separate, you know, down here, we're separate from everybody. I have no idea what you're really thinking inside your head. That was my fuck. You know, I can, I'm very intuitive. I can read energy very well, but also there are people who are not nice and there are liars down here. And I didn't know that, but it's taken me a long time to fig figure stuff out. I can be pretty naive. And so when, where I was, there was no separation also. It was like I was an individual, but I was also tapped into like the collective consciousness of that realm. So. Uh, Sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it wasn't like I was using like English to talk to them. That makes sense. It's just, mm -hmm. You know, you can read each other's thoughts, kind of. And it's but I don't like want to say that, like I knew, like I didn't. I don't want to say like, oh, there was a special language or something. I mean, maybe for other people, I don't know. I didn't have a special language. It was just like I just knew everything. Understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I will say, like the messages that I have re that I received, like you know, being human is hard. Was like I interpret it now in English. Does that make sense? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it translates gets broken yeah. down. So like, but yeah. I don't remember it not being in English. Also, I don't right. know. I don't know. So, um, so yeah. Any any other questions about being there? Any similarity to like dreaming? 
Because hmm. like when people talk about like being in like a lucid dream state, they hmm. say that they're like over there. You're essentially, yeah, you're you're creating everything, mm -hmm. but also an individual if you can lucid dream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it was not like a dream at all. For me, it was not like a dream. It was, it was more, it was like almost like ultra reality. Like, it's like you can kind of see for the first time and everything looked crazy vivid and like everything had detail. Also, no. Hmm. Because it was everything and everywhere and nothing and nowhere at the same time. Now, do you have any memory of like helping or like being around with the previous Jamie spirit beforehand? Mm, I would say that, um, hmm. Would you get like a, a little binder and they're like, oops, here's everything you need to know. And like, <laughs> like, here you go. <laughs> Not really. I think that um, the purity of spirit that called forth on God. Got your attention. Because mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, you like didn't have any like connection to the previous spirit. You just heard the not the plea for help, or like when you were talking to God, you just you the spirit that you that's in you now like picked up on that and was like, I need to help this person. Mm -mm. It was more that um, like I don't want to scare you guys either, though. Like, yeah, you're not gonna scare all me. All right, all right. She stepped through the timeline. She shifted timelines on our behalf. That was one of my questions. That yeah, because time is all playing out at the same time, just in different layers. Mm, when, when we talk about a simulation, it's the outcomes are simulated. And she, I was, it's almost, it's almost like, we were searching for the one who could find us. And the search really began. Uh, there was that the uh, eclipse in 2017, the total solar eclipse that happened. It went right over her house. And from that point on, things started to shift. It was she was identified. But there was many people have been identified. It's what do you do with it? And so will you listen? Will you pay attention? Because if you can if you can pay attention and listen and do the things that we're asking while you're while you're here, then um, she listened. Most people don't listen very well. And mm -hmm. so she had already like attuned the body in a in a way that would was beneficial to what needed to happen um earth is very beautiful the humans here are very beautiful it's not it's it's no one's fault here that it is as hard as it is there are some people who were born here and some people who have chosen to incarnate here and um <clears throat> we're all, you know, we're, we're, <sighs> the prime directive is real. We don't step in and help unless you've asked for help, first of all. Mm -hmm. So there is no way that we will animate a body at 48 years old unless you've asked for help. Mm -hmm. So that was very important. At the same time, she was groomed. It's no... It, it's there are no coincidences when you pay attention to the signs of synchronicity. So she listened to what we were asking her to do. And we asked her to do a lot. Hmm. 
It was a it was a real sacrifice that she made for us. She's been well taken care of. We will always take okay. very good care does, of her. Mm -hmm. Does she get another like choice, like a recycled? Like does she get to go to another planet or another she graduated physical body? She Done. saved the princess on the first man. So she's like, I'm out. <laughs> no, it's just we tag teamed. All right. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what, you can keep asking. What, what's your next? No, go ahead. No, 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 no. You did a really good job. You did a really good job. You answered a lot of questions with you story just telling it. No, but I mean there's more to tell. No, I, I mean just so oh. far, like oh okay. I'm going over my questions and you already checked a lot of them off. Oh, okay. Okay. What about you, Josh? I'm just li I'm just listening and like all of this just it keeps reminding me of like the great wheel of karma and like reincarnation. Yes. It, because like the way you were describing it, it's it's literally that like hmm. the intermediate space inside of the wheel of karma has like five or six sections and each represents a possible state of rebirth, such as gods, titans, peoples, animals. And it's like every sentient being goes through those separate states as you're like washing the soul. Mm -hmm. So you're literally learning a different lesson every time you're reincarnated. And that's for like the main your soul not just like me as josh right now if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah like right now my soul is learning the lesson that it needs to from this realm yes yeah exactly. Exactly. so yeah yeah that's like i i love buddhism like it's it just makes the most sense out to me because yeah. like that it's very yeah. spiritual yeah. and i feel very connected to it yeah so and like I everything you're saying is just like reaffirming like things that I've already like researched and looked into. So I'm like, okay. Good. So you're literally answering all of my questions without me having to ask them. Good. Good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You can go on. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, she saved the princess on her first man. So she got a fast pass. And, um, but I'm here now. So, there's like the before me and the after me. And um, what's been really beautiful. Well, first of all, I didn't. Uh, you know, the remembering. I'm, I'm very lucky that I was given like as much memory as I've been given of, of you know, where I was. Mm -hmm. um, but also like there's been a lot of like you know I only know I'm on a need to know basis there's a lot I don't need to know yet because if I had known a lot of the stuff that I know now it would have hindered my metamorphosis mm -hmm. so um she she was a good kind person <laughs> I'm also a good kind person because she was good and kind so I appreciate that about her and like a gentle heart very very sensitive and also um a very sensitive family and not i don't mean sensitive in the like emotion all kind of way but sensitive in a psychic way yeah like connected to it mm -hmm. like yeah. yeah um so so anyway uh like i mean you know I, they took me to the hospital and um you know spent some time there and everything I've been so guided in such a beautiful way and I was able to find a great apartment with my kids and um, I moved to Asheville where it's very it's a vortex here there's a lot of quartz crystal under the ground it's very like high vibrational 
lots of beautiful people that live here who are not weirded out by any of this stuff at all. And uh, I felt so alone to begin with, but also that was a really important thing to be so alone um, because there was a lot of learning that I needed to do. And so what I've come to realize is that, you know, humans are doing the absolute best they can to make sense of something that's almost nonsensical in a way when I'm talking about God and religion and all that. And so religion is much like time, a human construct, making sense of something that it's way beyond our five senses to understand just yet. We, we are getting there. We will be there one day. Um, but, you know, right now we're doing the best we can. And so there are ascended masters, you know, Buddha, Christ, I'm leaving out others, but yeah. You know, so it's like people, once you hit that state of enlightenment, it's kind of yeah, like everything exactly. opens up. Yeah. Exactly. And the story that resonated most with me is the allegory, Plato's allegory of the cave, mm -hmm. where um, the someone who's been trapped in a cave, who's been paying attention to the shadows and thinks that the shadows is real life, somehow gets out climbs out and real, sees the sun, sees how beautiful everything is and understand enlightenment and mm -hmm. then goes back into the cave to tell others. But, you know, others don't really want to hear it. And it, it really does take a personal experience. It's mm -hmm. hard to, to bring that knowledge to someone else and enlighten them. It's really nearly impossible. But what mm -hmm. you can do is, you know, um, like your energy can certainly and, and with anything, you know, your own courage, your own kindness, your own love can help another person feel courageous and feel loved and feel kind. And and so I, I think that really has been a lot of what I reason I'm here is, you know, I'm just one person among many um, who are here helping Earth. But I think that um, and I would consider anyone really who's interested in this to also be part of. Uh, part of helping and just because I came in to a body that's much older you know most people come in with bodies that are babies doesn't mean I'm any different than anyone else so I mm -hmm. would consider the two of you also to be like very similar to me you just might not remember it as well and life can be you know a real shit show down here and so you know anybody who's who's made it as far as you guys have, I'm really proud of you <laughs> because, you know, Thanks. it's hard to get Thanks. like, <laughs> you get real bogged down down here, you know? <laughs> and so I've been able, I'm only, you know, it's only two years ago. And so, um, and also I live in a, a town that's beautiful and um, I've been surrounded by other, you know, I came in like being able to read and write and all that kind of stuff. And so, I've been doing a lot of reading, a lot of writing, and then also just a lot of like now more tapping into like knowing that all of that is again a filter from through someone else's own brain that really the best thing I can do is just get really quiet and listen and then imagine a, a better world on my own, that my own imagination is where I am most powerful because without you coming up with an idea, you can't implement an idea that you haven't come up with. And so thought forms have energy and, and take on a life of their own. So if, if my thoughts are consistently about negative, bad things, I will encounter negative, bad things. But if I can consistently try, I mean, it's, I'm not perfect by any means, but if I can try to think about how the world could be a better place, then I can help create a better place. And I do feel like I stepped into the most optimal timeline for humanity. I believe that's why I sh had to step through. I had, I had to be initiated into this other, this new timeline because this is, the, this is the one that works. Like all, all the simulations yeah. point to this is the one that works. And I think that sometimes things get worse before they get better um, you know, you have to, if you want to build, like, if you want to fix your house, 
you have to get rid of, oh, like on Reddit, I saw like these mushrooms that were growing in someone's like <laughs> ceiling and on their floor. Well, mm -hmm. if you want to fix it, you have to, you have to get rid of all that first. So you have to take it apart and throw it away. And the taking apart and throwing away, the dismantling doesn't feel good. It's not fun, but you have to do that first. So if you just paint over it, it's going to come back. So mm -hmm. we're dismantling a lot of things. Um, death is part of life down here. It's part of the cycle, but it's also what's beautiful about down here is that we do get the opportunity for rebirth and, and recycling. Um, and we get second chances and third chances and fourth chances and fifth chances over and over and over again. And, um, and so that's really beautiful. So a few months, but I was still left with like, what? That was the craziest fucking thing that could have ever happened. Am I just crazy? And so um, I met a Reiki healer like three months after my experience. And he did a Reiki session. And then he was like, I think you're ready for the DMT. They're telling me you're ready. <laughs> I was like, okay, I don't know. You know, because um, at this point, I had not thought about aliens at all. Like none of that. This I was merely on the God and angels thing. Mm -hmm. How I was interpreting what had happened to me. The very spiritual and, side of it. Yes, exactly. That I was like, holy fuck, religion. Now I understand what all these like it all just makes sense. And Ezekiel's wheel and all. Yeah, well, actually, Ezekiel was well, doesn't really come into it yet because that's more <laughs> when I started realizing, like, wait a second, maybe there's something physical that can manifest here. Mm -hmm. um, Trans, Transdimensional craft. Yes, exactly. Exactly. But I wasn't, I was not ready for all that yet. Mm -hmm. I was still separating the two, right? The two experiences. Yeah. I did not think of it as being interdimensional. And so, uh, so I did the Reiki healing and then I did smoke DMT. And what that did was um, it put me right back into the realm where I was during the, the near death experience. So, at first, the, the beings came down and did like heart surgery on me to repair the damage that had been done to the, this heart before I incarnated, because there was a lot of damage that had been done, especially in childhood, but also with some other things. And so that I would say, actually, the adult stuff has been my responsibility to heal. The childhood stuff is what was healed for me. Mm -hmm. And um, and once that was over and I saw like sacred geometry and everything, I like everything was pixelated. It was again, as if I had taken off sunglasses. And then once the, once I saw that, once the heart surgery had happened and they came down and took care of me and left me and, and did that, then it was, then I was ready to, to go. And it was like hyperspace being shot out into this like waiting room, purple velvet sofas gorgeous absolutely beautiful um but then but then it was like no you're not you're not here for that part you're here because this is where you've always existed and so that's when i got to go like backstage back to mm -hmm. the soul family and it, that is the part that was just like the near-death experience part and so um it was like a homecoming um they were so happy to see me i was so happy to see them i cried and cried and cried and cried and cried because that was when I realized that like everything, everything that I knew was real, but I was too afraid to admit was real was actually real. And I didn't have to worry about being crazy anymore because it doesn't matter if I don't ever tell anybody, if no one ever believes me again, I, I know it's real. And, um, and there was such like love and laughter and excitement and happiness. And <laughs> it was very much a sense of like, we told you it was going to be hard. We knew, but oh my God, you're having so much fun also. Cause I was, I was having fun. I, was, I have fun. I'm, I have a lot of fun. And they're like, and you know, like it's okay. It's hard, but like everything's going to be fine. You're taken care of everything you don't have to worry about this part anymore just relax have you don't fun. get chastised for doing drugs <laughs> what you don't get chastised for doing drugs 
No. No. Well, not this one. This was <laughs> the only reason I do you think I've ever been approached about like you need to do DMT. Hell no. That still hasn't happened to me since. Like the only reason that opportunity presented itself is because I needed them so badly to tell me that mm -hmm. I wasn't crazy. That's why that happened. And so, and, and to be reassured, to have the heart healing from the childhood that, um, and to be reassured and also to be told, like, you can enjoy yourself while you're down there. Like, this is, this is new. We know it's new and, but you are in a body. And also there was some checking in, like, you know, are you okay? Are you okay? Do you, is this, do we need to make this a permanent thing where you come home or are you okay down there? And um, when I, okay, let me back up. They weren't asking like, do you need to die? It was more <laughs> like, we want you to enjoy yourself also while you're there. Mm -hmm. And if you need to come back, you just let us know. And yeah, but it's, like, it's like when you go off to college and your parents are like, Hey, are you good? Do you need anything? Oh, yeah. God. Yes, exactly. That's exactly yeah. what it felt like. Like, can, do you need $20 for dinner? Right. Like, <laughs> you know, how's your laundry? Are you good? <laughs> and, and also like, we don't want to tell you, you, we don't tell you how to live your life, but you need right, to be grateful right. because we're all back here kind of wishing we were in a body. We, we mm -hmm. kind of wish that we got to play this game. And don't forget, like, you know, you chose this, like you, you literally chose this and you wanted mm -hmm. to be there and you, you, you knew all of this was going to happen. And so don't for a second believe that this was anybody's choice, choice, but your own. And um, so they, they were like, you know, you can really just like go into the five senses real deep. Like there's so much down there. You can listen to good music and eat wonderful food and fall in love and all these beautiful experiences that you get to have while you're in a body because of the duality. The duality is what makes it so hard, but y'all, what makes it so hard is what makes it so goddamn fucking beautiful. Also, it's true when you only know light, then light is all that you have. Right. And it's beautiful and wonderful. Light and love is beautiful. But it's the darkness that makes you appreciate the light, you know, mm -hmm. and and being grateful in the midst of darkness. There's so much to be grateful for because the sun is going to rise again. It always happens. It's cyclical here. You know, it's like the waves of the ocean. They go in and they go out. And you can trust that. You can trust the rhythm of of the of nature, of the laws that are in place mm -hmm. here. Right. And so the sun's going to set, but the sun will also rise again in the morning. And so coming back from that experience where I got reminded of that was such a blessing. And, you know, since then, I. Of course, I get sad and and whatnot. I mean, that's just part of being here. But I also have a real sunny disposition and I am an optimist, hard headed optimist. Thank you, Jamie, for all of that hard-headed optimism. Mm -hmm. And also, I've learned that what I think about very quickly can manifest into my reality. So, and it manifests exactly when it's supposed to. And that's mm -hmm. another thing to trust, not just for me, but everyone who's listening, that when you want something, you, you can think about it and it will appear eventually if you're ready for it. And... But it goes both ways. So if you're real focused on the sad, depressing parts, more than likely you're going to keep having more sad and depressing mm -hmm. moments. Um, but if you can see the glimmer of hope through that, the, the more that you focus on that glimmer, it's like the sun rising. It's like the sunrise. You know, you see a little bit of rays in the morning. And, you know, if you really focus on it, you're going to see that. And it, the sun's going to come up. Now, I can be sad and I can go, like, lock myself in the closet. And then I won't think that the sun had risen at all. All I had to do was stand up and walk out of the closet. And there it is, you know, right now. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And so I would say, like, the most important things that a human body can do, because this is a space suit. Also, we're all spirit, you know, mm -hmm. energy inside this thing um, is to and it sounds so hokey, but like 
drink water, exercise your body, keep it in tip top shape. Um, now I will say Jamie was not the healthiest of healthies. And so, um, that's something I've been working on, but I go to the gym now. I, I, I'm doing great. I'm almost 50. I don't feel almost 50. I feel like I'm 25. You don't look 50. You Dang. don't look 50. <laughs> I'm still short. You know, I can wear heels. Not really. I don't want to wear heels, but um, get in the sun. Like the sun is so powerful. It makes you feel so good when you get sunshine. You know, the heat on your skin is important. And like keep your third eye, like open your third eye. And you do that by like sun gazing. Which oh, also yeah. It opens your pineal good. gland. Yeah. It does. And, you know, in the morning. Uh, also, there are a lot of things that have been taught down here that are not really necessarily true. So like the whole don't stare at the sun. Actually, no, you should try staring at the sun. Just try it for shits and giggles. But, you know, start like in the morning when the sun is coming up, pay attention, look at it at night. What you will see is that in the center, and it's, it's so high up right now, even with the sunshade down, it's too intense for my eyes. Um, but like, it's purple. Do you know the sun was purple? When you look at it, like, you can you'll be able to see the rain, rainbow in the sun and like in the center it's this beautiful purple so when the sun goes down tonight you know look at it see what you see um i don't know if there's any other talk to you develop like we 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 need relationships with other people we have to be connected to other people we have to talk it out that's something that's really important down here is talking out to everybody and um the hard part yeah the hard yeah. part so cultivate friendships be honest also here's the word of advice filter and detach if someone is not being kind to you if they are are not good for you let them let them just yeah and you don't even have to do that just let them just, yeah, you know, no that's, that's how it is it's like it out. friendships you know that like you start. thought would be forever yeah, yeah. This, it's okay. And yeah, we're people leaving drift, back to the and that's universe. Fine. Yeah, and it's all because we're on different paths. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we intersect. Sometimes we go alongside of each other. Sometimes we come back. Sometimes we're just separate. But it's all okay. And don't get too hung up on that little stuff. And, um, yeah. All right. That's it, I think. All right. Let's take a little break. Okay. I got to pee. Me too. Okay, I'll, I'll go into my number. <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing that with us jamie that was an amazing story yeah no i'm sh like that was very hard for you to do so thank you for sharing you're welcome thank you for listening and and treating it with such kindness and compassion of course yeah so, no judgments here safe space Yes, and um, it's going out into the ether where, you know, <laughs> who knows. Yeah, and honestly, I'm sure it's not the most strange thing we hear during this podcast. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> Hoping for something really, really strange, so. <laughs> um, so, I know, Jamie, you've been curious on what made me so interested in mm -hmm. NDEs in the first place. Um, so I'll tell you kind of a little rundown of where my obsession came from. Um, so about a year ago, I was just randomly listening to podcasts like I do. Um, and it was a, it was actually a true crime podcast. I can't remember the name, but they had people explaining their NDEs and I'm listening to them and I'm like, this is horseshit. Like this is, you guys just made this up. You want to be on a podcast. Cool for you. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They said a few things that I was like, hmm, like, let me just do my research, right? Before I'm just an asshole and I'm just like, that didn't happen. Okay. Open the rabbit hole and just, I fell in. Like, it goes on and on and on. So I ended up watching and listening to like hundreds, hundreds of testimonies of people having NDEs. Um, so first, I'd say I probably did about like 15 or 20, right? And I was like, fascinated. Mm -hmm. But they all came up 
positive and they were all in the vein of like god mm-hmm. i had a problem with that so i'm like i can't get behind it because i don't believe in that yeah. religious system mm-hmm. yeah so i was like okay let me look for negative ones found a bunch of negative ones right the problem was they still all kind of were in that like catholicism the devil god the hellscape yeah exactly so i was like no i gotta go outside of that so i went to like international people and i listened to like people uh that were hindu that had these experiences and Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just agnostic people and you know atheists um and again you know it's like the maps we talked about with the missing people you just lay these things over each other and they're all the same there there's so many things that people are explaining that are exactly the same so Part of, so the being of light is what got me originally. Like, because no matter who, no matter what their belief system was, there was a being of light. Like, you know, it's just, that made me think like, well, maybe that part of religion is right. So like, Mm -hmm. take out like the name, like you said, take out God, take out, you know, any Jesus, Christ, anything like and then look at it from like maybe there is a guiding force or a creator or something like that. Mm-hmm. I have a hard time with that personally. That whole thing really doesn't work for me. <laughs> um, so I went back into it. I started looking at more and more and more. And like I'm telling you guys, I the amount of time I put into like listening to these things, like I have. Like one day I'll show you my notebook. Like I have a notebook with just scribbles of like people's names so I can go back and like see if they did another podcast and see if they told their story, if it lined up, if it was the same. Mm-hmm. Um, or if it changed. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like I was like, I'm telling you guys, like it got me. Um, mm-hmm. Then Mr. David Grush comes on and is like, not aliens, interdimensional. So I'm like, oh shit. Like this, at the time I'm, focusing on all this stuff he starts talking about that and like i just put them together and i'm like if you know if there is a veil if there's a a dimension if there's a thin layer if there's something we can't see like we're all talking about the same thing then like if he's talking about things hopping even if it's not the dimension we started in it leaves the door open for like the other side like what's to the left like yeah well that whole thing started then like you guys know we've talked about before i started reading the American Cosmic yeah. and she, Diane Pasolka in that book breaks down religion. And again, the overlap is undeniable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like, you know, my rest of my nonsense came in. I, it was like, I looked for ways to disprove everyone's story. Mm. So from there I went like, okay, if that, if I'm going to consider this a rea- a possibility, right? That people have NDEs and they're going somewhere and they're experiencing something and they're connected to something. And I'm going to consider the fact that there's inter- interdimensional beings that are potentially the same. I was like, what does that mean for people who are possessed on Earth? Like negatively or positively. So I got really into exorcisms and I started looking into, I found this one priest who, um, he talked, I forgot his name. But he talks about it a lot, and he's on a podcast, and uh, mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff he says about. So one thing that, and this is why I asked you this, Jamie. One thing that came up a lot of times in NDEs was surrendering, whether it be to God, whether it just be to death, whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. Um, when you're possessed, a lot of that possession is either your weakness in controlling your body or your addiction, whatever it is, like like that entity found a kink in the armor and exploited it. Uh, but one of the biggest things that priests say, I'm getting the chills talking about this. One of the biggest things that priests say is when they, you know, are interacting with that, they try to get to the person past whatever the being is, the entity, and like telling them to surrender to God, right? 
again, so now does that put in a step to like, is there something more to like us consciously surrendering to a higher being? Again, that goes into all kinds of meditation and Buddhism. And you start talking, you, you know, there's thousands of monks around the world that claim that like they detach from the bodies, they go somewhere else, they are able to commune with higher beings. Um, is that all the same thing? Like, so again, like that, they all end up folding into each other. Then I started asking around Reddit. I started looking around Reddit, just having random little conversations. Then I put out that ad for this podcast. Then this happened. And like, since this started, the synchronicities and the like feeling of being guided, I don't, again, like you, like you said, like you feel crazy admitting to this. But like the sense of feeling guided and just knowing what's right and what's wrong and like yeah. you don't have you like you said Nikki, I'm not thinking a lot of this I'm not thinking about yes it's just it is like, you're in the flow yeah. yeah like I'm just like well this is how it's gonna be this is what I should do like let me just post on Reddit like I don't go out I don't talk to people but let me try. Um, and like, you know, I said I had done it before. It didn't like hit, it didn't stick. Um, and then you guys came around and obviously it stuck. Um, we had some issues. And again, that whole situation not, was not, like- Not among the three of us. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yes. Um, yeah. Abroad. Again, abroad. It, <laughs> yeah. Like it, it felt more cohesive. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, it did. Just, it was just a feeling. Like, it's not even like a negative thought. Like, this isn't working or this. It's just, mm -hmm. no, this is what it should be. It, like, worked uh, itself out. Yeah, mm -hmm. essentially, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that morning, I don't usually go on Reddit. Well, okay, that's a lie. I go on Reddit, like, first. <laughs> <laughs> I don't usually go on Reddit again before <laughs> I uh, have my first class. Mm-hmm. And it was, I don't know, 8.30-ish in the morning. And it was just like, I got a hit that like, no, you're supposed to, oh, you need to go on Reddit. But it's so yeah. weird because. It's crazy. Because like, I never, I, I did the same thing. I was, I woke mm -hmm. up super early scrolling Reddit, you know, my morning scrolling. Mm -hmm. And then I never comment. Like, I, I hate social media. I'm just a lurker. And I like look at articles and yeah. pictures and everything like that. But like, I just felt like I needed to comment. I was like, you know what? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I just sent you a private message because I don't, yeah. And like, how quickly uh, after you posted, Lee, did you get messages from the two of us? Uh, like I said, you guys were in the first couple few. Like, mm -hmm. But again, like I told you, some of the people I had talked to originally were like so clearly out. Mm -hmm. Like just by talking to the initial conversation, I was like, okay, no, not yeah. even <laughs> thinking about this person. Right. Yeah. Um, and then like you guys, I instantly, we brought, we went over to discord and like, I literally ignored everyone else. Mm -hmm. Like I still have people responding to that. <laughs> really? Um, like, That's crazy. Yeah, it's just there. Like, and every once in a while someone will That's see great. it and be like, Hey, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> like, yeah, no, sorry. I think I have what I need. <laughs> position um, is filled. <laughs> yeah. But you being an experiencer with an NDE. Uh, Josh, we are somehow just randomly always on the same page. It's um, so wild. <laughs> yeah, and like, <clears throat> we're very similar, I think, in like, belief structure. Mm -hmm. um, so it just worked. It was very like, again, I didn't have to like, be like, oh man, who am I gonna pick? I have to like do auditions and change pick this person or that person. Like, yeah. it's like, cool, this yeah. is it the name like i have a paper i have my phone just a list of random names but like that morning the name just came to me i was like mm -hmm. i really like this it's just very weird this again it's just so strange oh. just the universe all those synchronicities yeah, yeah. But coming again, together it, for some purpose again is it crazy to think that like it's partially because like i just accepted it and i'm just surrendering to like the I'm not fighting anything. I'm just letting it go. Mm -hmm. um, it's manifestation. Yeah. I have I mean, since the year I started, like, getting into NDVs, like, I've meditated a lot more than I ever have, way more consistently. 
-hmm. I do have a different appreciation for my body. Mm -hmm. um, listening to NDEs gave me that. Like that mm -hmm. was because I heard a story of a guy who, I think it was a cardiac arrest, and he is seeing his body from above, and he's just washed over with gratitude for the vessel. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I just you just sit back and you kind of think about that on a regular basis, and I bitch and I moan and I'm like this hurts, that hurts. Uh, why am I this way? Why am I that way? And um, you, when you step back, you think about it and you're like, well, like I wouldn't be able to do anything I've done in my entire life, nothing, not one thing without my body. Yeah. Um, and it gives you like when you when you look at them separately, when you look at like I'm me, but my body's my body. It gives you an appreciation. You just have to look at this thing and be like, you've given me a hell of a lot more than I've given it. <laughs> Let's put it mm -hmm. that way. Um, I've given it nothing but abuse, constant mm -hmm. abuse. Um, so, I mean, if we are, like you said, in spacesuits, like, thank you, spacesuit. Like, yeah, right. And again, there, I've taken... There's issues, but you're holding up pretty well. <laughs> yeah, no system's perfect, right? Mm -hmm. I've taken more life lessons from listening to people's NDEs than I think any one source ever in my life or person. Uh, so it's almost kind of like opened your, you and your mind up to like a different pathway of thinking. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Jamie, almost like you going for that walk. Um, it's like it's a path. It's like a new, it, it, it couldn't yeah. get through. I said mm -hmm. like, like you going for your walk. Yes. It's like a path. Like, yes. whatever this energy is, knew it couldn't get through to me without, like, circumventing religion and that belief. So it was like, here, yeah. let me give you this. And, like, exactly. what do you think? And then, like, once I was able to look outside of the books, let's call them the books, the Quran, the Bible, the Torah. Mm -hmm. Like, once you can look outside and, like, think a little bit more about, like, the origin. And like, mm. if those are real, what were those people talking about? Like, what were those experiences? What were they trying to convey in the words that they had of their time? And a lot of times it's exactly what we're talking about now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Surrendering, be more in contact with the spirit, be mm. grateful, you know, like, don't worry about all the nonsense and the drama. Like, it'll be here whether you're here or not. Like, but exactly. while you're here, like, focus on being here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, I know it's profound. It really, like I've said it multiple times to you guys, it broke everything I believed in. Oh yeah. Just shatters your whole view of like what you think is important and what like the yeah. world view is. Yeah. And it, well, the interesting thing for me is that like, I've told my friends, like we need to have a podcast about this or that. And really, you know, they're so sweet and lovely, but they, they don't really have interest in, I mean, they know my story, but they won't, you know, not about that. So, but I have thought, I'm like, oh, should, do I need to write a book? Do I need to tell people my story? Is that important? I don't know. And then when I saw your post, you didn't, I don't, 99% sure you didn't, you did not mention that you were really into NDEs. I don't think I put that I was, I don't think mm -hmm. I was interested. I think I put like in like Maybe, one of the like, topics. We would like what the topics start. would be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It but wasn't I specifically no looking idea. That mm -hmm. you on a personal level had basically gone to school for however many months to really like do a deep dive on it. And, you know, so I really, I'm just, what I'm saying is like, I trusted you and I trusted you, Josh, from the get go. There was no part of me. And I, I, I do get, I don't want to say I get like the, the profound messages like I did before where it was like talking through me, but I do get like, Oh, you need to go this way or go that way. Or you need to do this, do that. And I listen to that, like the intuition. Yeah, it's just like a strong yeah. urge or a feeling. Yes, that's exactly. like I, yeah. Oh yeah. No, exactly. I do that all the time in my life. Like I talk to my exactly. wife and they're like, and no, I feel, I listen to my feelings, my instincts. And, like, yes. and if I knew that something was truly wrong, then I would yes. be panicked and worried. But ultimately yeah. I know nothing's wrong. Exactly. And mm -hmm. just and knowing just that like, I could trust the two of you, it felt very much from the, the get-go that, that you guys were trustworthy and I could, that, yeah, that you would, that you were but, good people. 
a year and a half ago, I would have scoffed at you. Jamie, I wouldn't have believed you a year ago, a year and a half ago. Yeah. See? Well, part of me wants to say would... God works in mysterious ways. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody but... was prepping you. <laughs> so, probably, Sorry, probably. Lady, it's true. Um, I would have I would have begged for a scientific angle. Mm. Right. Right. Even like the, lo- sort of the, the lack of oxygen to the brain, this, that, mm-hmm. or that. but like, um, what was his name? Dr. Uh, Pim Lomel. He mm-hmm. did extensive studies on NDV, NDEs. He was a cardiologist. Okay. Uh, so he had a lot of insight on like what was going on physically before people died. And he says mm-hmm. like a lot of times when you go into cardiac arrest, like you don't know it beforehand. So you're not scared. Like your adrenaline's mm-hmm. not peaked. You're not mm-hmm. like, so for you to like hallucinate is not as likely. Um, gotcha. And he breaks down a whole lot of other, other scientific facts of like what mm-hmm. the body is doing and why what being reported is not the same as some of those other things they talk mm-hmm. about, like a lot lack of oxygen mm-hmm. or hallucinations mm-hmm. or things like that. Um, but even him, like, again, oh, and that's something else that, that stood out to me. So many NDE experiencers, I, that doesn't work. NDE. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's experience experiences. Um, so, but those people, people who've had that experience are medical doctors or you know, psychologists, like not people mm-hmm. that are prone to like whimsical tales and like right. you know, they have they're analytical. They they study. Yeah. They're based in fact. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they come back and a lot of them say the same exact thing I'm saying right now. Like I had to reevaluate everything. Mm-hmm. And then, like with uh, those doctors, it oh, it's like they. They do, they switch their like practice pretty much from like, oh, I was doing this form of like medicine, but now that I've had my experience, this is what I need to be doing. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I like uh, a few of them have said, like, I listen to patients more. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll tell you, like, as a technician, um, veterinary, not human, but you're programmed to like follow your protocols. Mm-hmm. Like when you're triaging something, like you're not necessarily listening to the owner telling you what happened. You're like, I got to do this. This is bleeding. I got to stop that. This looks broken. I can wait to take care of that. Like, let's clear the air- airway. But like, you know, you look at a patient as a patient, not a person. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's a list of problems and it's how you're going to solve them. And, you know, listening to doctors say like, I've listened to patients and I've been able to like avoid medication. Or, you know, um, like I was leaning one way into like one diagnosis and like they kept insisting that this is what was going on. And normally I would have been like, it's just a side effect. It's just a side effect. Um, mm-hmm. And they listened and it came to be like that. That was the right way. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it just it changes the way you think. And I can't personally actually imagine experiencing it like. I, I would imagine it'd be almost impossible to live in this world on a daily basis. Oh yeah. Or yeah, like especially yeah. like the people that have like been dead for like two or three minutes and then they come back. I couldn't even imagine like continuing life after that. Oh, like that would be it sounds a big so great. Fuck. Like, it sounds like such a better place. And even the mm-hmm. people that are panicked beforehand and like you were like worried about your children or your loved mm-hmm. one. Um, once they're there, they're like washed over with the sense like, oh, they'll be okay. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to stay here. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I find that fascinating because I think about my wife and my kid and nothing on this earth would warrant me being pulled away from them. Like nothing. Like there's not one thing in the world that would go in between me and them and that I would be okay with. Yeah. Uh, And to think that like people pass away and they are okay with that is just another layer of like solid proof like that to me is more proof than textbooks Mm -hmm. yeah so so, i mean that's why i'm still obsessed with it like 
I told you guys I have a whole, whole <laughs> unwatched YouTube playlist of NDEs and lectures. And, yeah. Like, so if you're listening to this and you have had an NDE, please share it with us. I definitely mm -hmm. want to hear about it. We all want to hear about it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Jamie has a really good point when she says that, you know, if you have experienced something like this, talking about it is good for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, we're not here to judge you. I'm not here to judge you. Um, I can't. We just had this conversation. I told you guys there's no judgment. There's no room for it. Yeah, no. Um, That's not what we're here to do. Yep. So if you guys want to come on, come on. If you want us just to tell your story, we can we can read your story through email. We can we'll get it out there. Because um, I know firsthand just how lonely it can be at the beginning when you're trying to understand all of this. And as much as like um, your loved ones love you, it's also a little disconcerting for them to have to hear it. And um, yeah. I know for me also, um, not on purpose, but I am, I have like my, the per my personality is completely different. And so that's been a, difficult for my children um, because, you know, they love their mom. They love the old me. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so they're getting to know the new me a little bit more. And I think we're doing better. Um, but if they're, I just also, I feel like part of my role is to maybe help out also anyone who had an NDE and also came back feeling very different because that's a difficult thing to process because it feels mm -hmm. like you're floundering really when mm -hmm. you don't have the same um, connections with people that you used to have. And so if anybody you know wants to reach out, I'm more than happy to to talk oh, to them and be, and be a friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, most of the topics we talk about would be pretty isolating if you're an actual experience, yes. regardless. Exactly. Yeah. If it's, if it's exactly. normal, if it's cryptid, and yeah. you saw it with your own two eyes, yeah. people don't believe you. It's, mm, it's, you just feel like a fish out of water, and you're just like, oh, fuck, man, am I really crazy? Or did I really see that? And then you start questioning yourself. and Exactly. No. Exactly. Yeah. So we're here so you don't have to question yourself and you can tell your story to a group of people that exactly. actually want to hear it, are interested, and are going to believe what you tell them. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. I think also what's amazing to me has been um, the, the, the new connections that I make have been so much more profound and deeper than any other relationships really that I ever had, like in the, the pre me part. Mm -hmm. So, and part of it is, I don't know. I just sort of, I have precognition about a lot of things and I generally kind of know how people are thinking and feeling anyway now. And so, but I've done that to Lee a few times. Yeah. Um Jamie, you have part of what's broken my world. I'm telling you, it doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense. I actually, I don't even know if I told you this, Josh. I was the incident that happened. You know, when we were trying to co mm -hmm. have a cohesive team. I think it yep, was yep. that. Time. And I sent him a few messages, and I literally responded to the question he was typing and my mm -hmm. response went through first and then his question went through like i knew what he was i don't know it was just it was weird but we've done that mm -hmm. and, like with josh it's like mm -hmm. i'm literally thinking all morning like okay like this is my plan for the logo and josh will mention the logo the first time we'll start talking. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah it's like, like we're on the same wavelength ah! <laughs> <laughs> i said it too <laughs> just, just mic job i'm done <laughs> that's it <laughs> i can't take it it's too it's, it's know, so man. Like either we're just all fucking crazy or <laughs> it's really something hey man i wouldn't i wouldn't want to be crazy with anybody else but you guys so. <laughs> uh, oh, <it's>, no <laughs> one day we because you know for any for the listeners if you don't remember so josh lives on the west coast he's snoop dog and Lee lives on the East Coast. This is like West Coast, East Coast. And sorry. Snoop. Oh, we love each other. <laughs> <laughs> Snoop will have my heart forever. 
If we could ever get Snoop on the show, I would yeah, literally die. I mean, he does do it every time. So, like, if there was a chance of getting a celebrity, like, Snoop is higher on that. You don't even know how much I love him. Like, come on, Snoop, come on oh, down, Snoop, man. Tell us your spooky him. stories. I know you got yeah. that shit. <laughs> oh, man. So, I, I do a one with Josh. If anyone's out there, yeah. Yes. Celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear it. <laughs> but we're all so far apart from each other, and I live in the southeast. But one day we will all get to see each other in person. Oh yeah, it's gonna happen. We're gonna. It's it's gonna happen for it sure. will happen for sure. Oh no, man! I would really love good. to do like a live investigatory like ghost hunt podcast. Like the three of us just work. meet up. <laughs> I, just joined, I just joined a bunch of local. Uh, Paranormal hunting Reddit groups. Ooh. Ooh. I'm gonna try to link up as well. On a nice. Nice. Yeah, you get the spirit box, and I'll get that thing with the connect to see if there's anybody <laughs> back there. I'm definitely gonna get a spirit box though, because we're going to uh, Ireland and Switzerland. Oh, um, Scotland. 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 Yeah. And like we're staying in castles, we're doing like all these underground <gasps> tours. Really? Yeah, that's yeah. gonna be so, <laughs> so, <laughs> <bring it>. so <laughs> fun. <laughs> I mean, uh, could try to do a probably have to do like a uh, pre recorded from there, too. I was thinking you do have to do a live stream for it to get through, but I could probably record from there. Oh, we should totally do something that would be so cool. Love that. <laughs> I get one of those little <laughs> microphones with my phone, <laughs> little tiny microphones, like I interview people, <laughs> right. For me, it's just so nice finding two people who, um, not only will just listen to me talk about it. But also can have a conversation about all this, you know. Yeah. So nice. have a conversation about anything, especially. Oh yeah, and that's again, this podcast <laughs> is that platform. I just want to talk about all the things all that the no things. one wants to hear me talk all about. The stuff. The table. Yeah, exactly. It's so fun. All the <laughs> things that our our families are tired of us like hearing about. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and then our dogs look like. The same. The same. <laughs> yeah, you just have a tall. You have a tall homie. That's it. <laughs> He's like, I'm trying to sleep. Oh, Son, like I See, we should take a lesson from dogs. Mm -hmm. Lay in the sunlight. Exactly. Take a nap. Get warm. Yep. Oh, thank you again, Jamie. This was awesome. You're yeah, welcome. You're welcome. Okay. I have to. I, I'm going to admit something to you. You did not ask me as many questions as I thought you were going to ask. You me. did a very good job of making sure I didn't have to. Yeah, and you pre answered a bunch of questions. <laughs> I, just, I, yeah, I didn't, and I had no idea. Really? <laughs> <laughs> These are all the questions I had. No joke. Like I had questions. You just did a very good job. Well, I would say it wasn't just me, Lee. So. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, mm. UFOs, UAP. Yes. Love it. The Grushinator. I love it. I'm ready <laughs> for his <laughs> office. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, this is it. another. We'll have a lot of fun with that topic, of course. Um, I don't think, I mean, there's been some stuff since the last time we all talked about it. A few things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm excited. I'm interested. I'm interested to talk about it in a different setting than last time. Agreed. Agreed. All right, guys. So if you want to submit an email, the email is ssospodcast at gmail.com. The number is scrolling down below. If you're on TikTok, I'll never say because it's an extension and all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> more on social media, TikTok, Instagram. You can find us there. Um, follow us. We'll probably be releasing this soon. I'm excited. So, I'm super hyped You're to get let everybody listen. Get in way um, <laughs> but yeah, thank you again, guys. It's awesome. I'm loving the pod. Me too. Me too. Like this is something I, I look forward to every week. Great. Well, thanks for listening. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching if you're on YouTube. And we'll see you guys later. Bye. Later.